Quentin Tarantino's latest movie. I don't know why I'm up here acting like this is normal. Like, do you know how long it's been since I reviewed a movie properly? And since that time, I got blown up. Was in a coma. I, I violently fought and shot a guy in the head. I had to go on the run, man. And I got in a fight with Elmo. And who the hell fights? Who the hell fights Elmo, dude? I just wanted a hug. I don't, I don't know how to review movies anymore, okay? I don't know how to do it. I need to learn how to review again. And that'll take God knows how long. Okay? I'm going to need a montage. Motor, avant-garde, cinematography, Pop popcorn, no, film criticism, movie suck, no, movie, movie good, movie, Hardly what Maybridge intended when he captured the Sally Garner at a gallop over a century ago. Mise en scène! Cinema Verite! And diegetic music! Take that overboard! Take that, Eli Roth! Michael Bay! training. I can do this. I've done it before. Okay. <sighs> Squint and Torino's latest film, I Want a Time Man, Hollywood. Is it any wood? <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is Tarantino's latest attempt to justify his foot fetish. Robert Redford stars as Brad Pitt, who for some reason is stunt double for Leonardo DiCaprio, despite looking nothing like him. Charles Manson, Marilyn Manson's dad, makes a brief cameo. Yeah, but if that was off, I'd be whipping your ass up and down this street. Yeah, go. Yeah. It's kind of a shame that my first proper review in a while, I have a movie I was really looking forward to seeing from one of the, the great directors still working, you know? Someone who makes, you know, for lack of a better term, real movies. And I still walked away a little bit disappointed. This is Tarantino's love letter or fairy tale about old Hollywood and the death of the Age of Innocence because of the Manson family. It's very evident from even the title to the fawning shots of Sunset Strip. It's clear that this is a fairy tale. It's kind of otherworldly. It's a movie that speaks to an era that was obviously incredibly influential to him as a director. And maybe that is the reason that I found the movie to be rather indulgent. Now let's talk some positives first, okay? I'm not gonna, just going to bash the movie because it definitely is a good movie. But the performances in the film are great. Leonardo DiCaprio, at times I think he gets a, a bit too much praise, a bit too much props for his acting when he just 
Almost overacts, goes big and shouts. That was the best acting I've ever seen in my whole life. Here he gives a much more subtle and reserved performance as uh, the character of Rick Dalton, who's kind of a seasoned actor whose career seems to be winding down. And we really get to see how he's dealing with that and really his mindset. He gives a really layered, fantastic performance. He's joined, of course, by his stuntman and something of his personal assistant, Cliff Booth, played by Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's very charismatic and entertaining in the role. And most importantly, they have really good chemistry because those are the two leads of the film. We also have uh, Margot Robbie in the role of Sharon Tate. She's not really given much to do. Well, I just reject your hypotheses. But I think I understand what Tarantino was going for. See, since The Manson Murders, Tate has become something of an icon by a lot of people, and not necessarily always in a good way. People kind of cling to that macabre factor of her being killed by the Manson family and the ghoulish element in it, of it. And over the course of 50 years, that being really what she's been known for, has really stripped away her humanity. And I think, in general, what the movie is trying to do, you know, she's presented in a way where it's like, she doesn't interact with people, she doesn't really talk, it's just her running errands or going about her everyday life. You know, it, it makes her a normal person again. I think it's rather telling that in the scene, the movie, we see her watching her own movie. And when there's other scenes in the film where we see films and it's the actor playing the, the famous star. In this case, it's the real Sharon Tate on the screen. I think that's probably Tarantino's attempt to give Sharon Tate her humanity back. That she wasn't defined by her murder and that she was really a wonderful, regular, talented person that we unfortunately never really got to know. The rest of the cast is made up of Fantastic actor, sometimes just in bit parts, uh, just to name a few. Uh, Bruce Dern, Timothy Oliphant, Dakota Fanning, Margaret Qualley, Al Pacino. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg in this movie. I do want to give special mention to one actress, actually. Uh, well, or don't call her an actress if you've seen the movie. She's an actor. Ten-year-old uh, Julie Butters, I think her name is. She has a few scenes in the movie, not many. But she has one scene with DiCaprio where she absolutely steals it away from it's fantastic really great scene it is a little bit scripty that that's not a word um but you know when you're just it, like watching a tarantino movie and you're like that's not how anyone talks that's how tarantino writes a script but still amazing scene great performance performances aren't the only positives though there's uh, quite a few positives the look of the movie is as you would expect fantastic from a tarantino film and of course that goes to the soundtrack as well which is a great kind of 60s Best of rock and roll classics. Uh, some obscure tracks too as well that kind of help build the tension. They're really well utilised throughout the course of the movie. Costumes and makeup are great. Uh, I especially like the look of the, the girls in the Manson family. A lesser film probably would have made them too overtly sinister. But they did a great job here of striking that balance where they looked realistic like real people. But also just that bit off where you're like, what are they up to? <laughs> Production design in general is outstanding. There isn't a lot of directors working today that could get a 60s era Hollywood on this scale. Tarantino does it and it looks gorgeous. So where does the movie fall down? I said the movie is indulgent and that allows many positives for the film. Like I said, the 60s Hollywood, incredibly indulgent, but it works and it's gorgeous. It also leads to some negatives though. A lot of scenes with recreations of TV shows, movies, and while many of them serve their purpose, others really don't there's one in particular that i thought jumped out it just feels like tarantino saw an opportunity to use new technology and just put it in and did it because he could and he went for it and i don't think it has any real purpose there's other scenes uh that don't really go anywhere i think i can pick out a few really fantastic scenes a few really good scenes and then a lot of it you kind of forget to be honest the film just has no real sense of urgency or drive it's a slow kind of shuffling aimless movie that takes us into an era of Hollywood and it does a great job of making us feel part of that era probably because it's so slow it takes its time but it's a little bit plodding and there isn't really a story and that is a problem it's a, just a little bit sloppy certain elements are introduced without any real reason um, a narrator is there at once and then he disappears and then he comes back at the end it's kind of like why is there a narrator at all we're you know, 
two and a bit hours into the movie, I don't think we need a narrator now. Uh, you have to give it a degree of crudeness, though, because when you think Tarantino Manson movie, you're going, oh God, this is going to be so tasteless and exploitative. But it's not. It's actually quite the opposite. It, it's probably his most mature film, certainly since Jackie Brown. It's a very disciplined film, um, quite surprisingly, uh, considering some of his other ones. There's even moments of emotion and kind of reflection that you haven't really seen in other Tarantino films. It doesn't feel like your normal Tarantino movie. Uh, and he kind of feels like he tried to move away from the Manson element, uh, or at least have it in the background. Now, I would say, <laughs> put a pin in all of what I said there, because we get into spoilers, and a lot of that gets thrown out the window. The movie is just a little bit baggy. I've kind of subscribed to the idea for a while that the death of Tarantino's longtime editor, Sally Menke, has kind of affected how tight his films are. And it kind of shows here, I think it also showed in Hateful Eight, just a little bit where it felt like it could have been a little bit slicker, a little bit tighter. And I think it hurts the movie. Long scenes of driving, over long dialogue moments that slow the movie down to a... And look, the Tarantino dialogue scenes are not something that are a bad thing, but they aren't really necessary. And they make the movie feel a little bit sluggish and directionless. On the whole, this is a really good movie. It looks outstanding, formats are captivating, and it's probably Tarantino's most mature film to date. It's held back though by how indulgent it is. It, some unnecessary scenes, aimless inclusions, just hurt it. They're, just to be clear, I'm, I hold Tarantino to a higher standard than a lot of filmmakers. If this was another director, you would think, oh, this is, this is really great. To him, you have to compare it to the rest of his films and you know he can do better in some elements because he has in the past. And because of that, this is probably middle of the pack of his films. But again, that's still really good. All his films in general are worthy of a watch at the very least. All right, look, I'm gonna do something I've never done in any good. Uh, we're gonna talk spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, it's gonna be spoilers until the rest of it. I said this film had a level of maturity to it earlier and that it felt like Tarantino made something quite unlike his other movies. Until we get to the ending. As you might expect, this ending gets gives us Tarantino's alternate version of the murders at the Polanski house. In the film, uh, the Pitt and Caprio's characters fight off and kill the Manson family members in brutally violent fashion. Okay, here's... I have a few problems with that, though. First off, I thought it was far too obvious that this is where the film was going. The, the lack of build-up to Tate's character, um, Pitt's character having a run-in with the Manson family beforehand. And if you're aware of the real-life story and see the homage to a fairy tale with the title, I don't know how you could ever assume that it was going to end any other way. And it would have clashed with the upbeat stuff if it had gone down the way it did in real life. And this isn't me slapping myself on the back for guessing the ending. I think a lot of people probably guess the ending. But it, my problem is that a lot of people are saying that the ending is where the big payoff is. And the film very much feels like a western in that it's slow and gives you an explosive ending. But when you already pretty much know what the ending is going to be, you don't get as much satisfaction out of it. And because of that, it was hard to enjoy it. I also wonder, like, if someone was not familiar with the, the actual real life story, how much gratification they get out of it. Genuinely, I, I don't know if it would make it better or worse. I see positives for both sides. You, you see, in the context of the, mo of the film, they haven't done anything. It requires your prior knowledge that, yeah, these people are the Manson family, and in real life, they killed and Char a pregnant Sharon Tate and others. Yet in the movie, that's not really presented. They're just kind of creepy, freaky, you know? And I'm not sure we should be cheering on uh, the brutal beating of a woman. Gr granted, it's a member of the Manson family, 
by Brad Pitt, a man who seemingly killed his wife. It's odd. You know, the, the alternate history here. I'm, go I'm, I'm going to use something that's become a bit of a dirty phrase, and that is uh, subverting your expectations, okay? Tarantino might have been trying to subvert your expectations with the ending. And for some people, you know, that's what he did. But the question to me is, to what end? If you're, if you're going to subvert expectations, it's to reveal some truth or give us a new perspective on something. I don't think this film did that. Maybe it was meant to be about the, the end of the Age of Innocence. Or had it not happened, Hollywood might have continued, continued excuse me, this pure, more wholesome output. But that doesn't work either. Because in that same year, we had Easy Rider, uh, Midnight Cowboy, um, The Wild Bunch, Incredibly Violent, Counterculture, X-Rated. So it already strayed away from the traditional Hollywood glamour that Tarantino presents. So what we're left with is an awkward revenge fantasy that carries very little weight, in my opinion. Considering how often the movie reminds us of real people, real stars, real Hollywood, how accurate it is, how this is basically the real thing, this is this movie star, blah, blah, blah. How, if you knew the story, could you escape from the fact that the real Sharon Tate was horrifically murdered? If you know the story, that's got to be in the back of your head the whole time. And I don't know how you can take solace in this pseudo-revenge fantasy. I mean, it seems to push the idea of, thank God we have true, real American heroes to fight off the Manson family. I don't know why you're meant to get out of this ending if you don't know the story either, aside from laughs at the pantomime level of violence. I'm not saying I want a historically accurate ending, but this ending is just a lot of nothing, in my opinion. In general... Tarantino has, you know, a film that was mature, although perhaps a bit slow, but he sacrifices all that to double down on the overtop violence that a lot of his films are known for and that he's often criticised about. And I don't have a problem with that, generally, but at least his other films are consistent in that. In this one, it feels horribly out of place. And I know someone's going to say, that's intentional. He's trying to create a level of shock and horror that would have been for the, the case for the people that had this Manson murder happen. But it doesn't really work for me. I think it only goes to underline how inconsistent the movie is. So those are my thoughts. Uh, it's a movie I thought was good, if not a bit disappointing and sloppy. It's still worth seeing. And it's going to inspire a lot of conversation, if nothing else. And the positives easily outweigh the negatives. Um, as I said, I hold Tarantino to a higher standard than I would hold a lot of filmmakers. It's still a really good movie. I just think he's capable of better. Not many filmmakers would even be able to tell the story on this scale. So it's worthy of seeing that on that merit alone. Maybe I'll come around to it a bit more in subsequent viewings. But at least on my initial one, I found it a little bit lacking. Violence. Why not let us imagine because a little Because it's so it. much fun, Jan. Get really? it. Yeah, really it it's not my job to flesh it out. No, it's my it's my job to try and ask you to. And that's I'm all, shutting you know, your butt down. And, 